Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Attorney Sharp Rally and we're going to talk about about the form I-864 which is basically the affidavit of support where a lot of people are confused uh, what needs to be done. I hope I will, I'm going to be able to kind of quickly give you an idea what you need, where you need that and how you, you basically, what kind of forms you have to fill in different situations. For one, this is a brochure from the USCIS. Whenever you file a petition, like an I-130 petition, and depending if you're filing while the person is inside the United States for your parents, your, your, your spouse, or your siblings, you, if they are inside the United States, you're filing the adjustment of status, this form has to be filed concurrently. However, that means you have to file it at the same time. However, if you, your parents or your siblings or your spouse is outside the United States, this form is usually filed at the second level with the National Visa Center, which is basically the State Department. But no matter where, where you're filing it, the bottom line, you have to file it. And the form is, is here, and the, you have the instructions, and this is how the form looks like. It's a form I-864, and this is the latest version. It expires in 2017. It might change. The form is pretty straightforward, not really, because sometimes there are some questions that people get confused upon. So if you are a person who basically is making enough money, and, uh, and you fall into the poverty guidelines, so I'm going to go into the... Uh, poverty guidelines I hope they have it here um, they have the poverty guidelines a uh, form and where you can basically calculate the the amount that you make in order you can type it here poverty guidelines and uh, 864 guidelines so if you and here they're going they're taking me to 2016 here okay here we go well, this is uh, the poverty guidelines right now, what they have on 150%. But, uh, of course, for California, it's usually 125%, but that's not really the form. But I'll find the form in a minute. But we'll go back. After you look at the poverty guidelines, see, this is the form, form I-864P. You will know how much how much money you're supposed to be, to be looking at um, when you file your case. For example, one person maybe is around 25,000, and each year it changes. For two person, and you have to count your, uh, the the person uh, and yourself, and you have to count extra extra people who, who to whom you are petitioning for, and also for your children, anybody who is dependent on you. Then you will come to the to the to the part of how much money you see here. It's going to look at one hundred and twenty five percent. Most of the time, it's like two people is twenty five. I think three people is like thirty something. It goes on like that, but you just have to calculate it. If you're not making, and we're talking about a yearly income, if you're not making that kind of money, then you might want to go for a joint sponsor. So the form the joint sponsor will have to file is the 864 form 2, the same, not 2, <laughs> also the same form, and, um, and they have to basically put themselves as joint sponsor. And, uh, and basically when, when they look at it, uh, they will be, you, if you look at the form, let's see if I have it here. Okay, so it didn't come up here. Hold on. Let us put the form here and then you will see the joint sponsor. It will ask the question, I'm offering myself as a joint sponsor. Now, if your joint sponsor is also married, uh, especially in a community property uh, state, you will want to put the I-864A for the joint sponsor. The I-864A is basically an attestation that this person is actually going to be taking responsibility if there's any government uh, government charges. So now, bottom line, after you fill this and you do, do it completely, you have to also put your tax returns, your current income, W-2, etc. to prove your income in order to do that. But many people are always scared, especially joint sponsor, wh what are their liabilities? Well, the liabilities is, is limited to taking uh, basically gov being a, a government uh, charge. So that means if that person you file the sponsor, affidavit of a sponsor for, has become a, a, a federal charge, basically they took benefits like food stamps and things like that, that you, you, you're making the, the, the basically the contract with the government that you will pay for that because they cannot be a burden on the, on the government. Um, from my experience, they have never gone after anybody, 
but they might start god knows but the truth is that you're not taking liability for that person's other stuff like for example some people will think that oh i have to to basically take the responsibility of my uh, of my brother's debts uh, liabilities regular liabilities no you're talking only about about uh, things like welfare and uh, the the government's liabilities that um, that the, a person can become while in staying in the United States. Even medical bills, unless they go to government uh, hospitals and things like that, you might not be responsible. So be careful if you are being a joint sponsor, but at the same time, there's no big thing to panic because this is something that happens all the time. People do it all the time. This is a fee waiver, by the way, for poverty guidelines, but there is a, the real poverty guidelines here. I think it's the form I-864P. 864p so let's see if we can we can get it here i think it's here let's see here we go that's the right form so that's the form like you see here for two people it's uh, you don't look at this one you look at the 125 percent is twenty thousand dollars for uh for uh three people is 25 for four people is 20 30 thousand how do you calculate that you have to add up everybody who's in your household your children, your parents, whoever is depending on you, and then whoever you petitioned for before. For example, let's say you petitioned for your mother before, and she's still under the affidavit of support within five years, and off in three years, four years, you go ahead and petition for your brother, you still have to count the mother in that. And then you reach the amount of money you have to make. So maximum, basically, and then you have to add it every time you add more people. If you have eight people, it's 51,000. Otherwise, if you go nine people now, you add 5,200, you keep adding it up until you reach the right amount. And if you're not making this amount, like I said, you can go ahead, get a joint sponsor who needs to fill another form I-864 and also if they are married, I-864A. One of the common mistakes people make once they start filling this form, because they have a joint sponsor, they tend not to fill an 864 for themselves. But you still have to put it, even you have zero income, because if you are the person sponsoring, you still have to take responsibility at the end of the day, even you're not making any money at that time. So, ladies and gentlemen, the I-864 is a little bit tricky, because many people make mistakes on that, and the case gets delayed and rejected again and again. So, if you need help, not only with the I-864, for your petition for your parents, your family, feel free to contact our office at 510742 five eight eight seven and anything i'm telling you today ladies and gentlemen is for educational purposes only you should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided you should contact an attorney if you have any questions feel free to call us at 510-742-5887 thank you very much uh, subscribe to our videos and we will be coming with new videos tomorrow